football 1982. Perhaps the most exciting year in Penn State's rich tradition. Penn State's loyal students and fans love the excitement and love their Nittany Lions. 1982. It was a season of celebration. It was a year of destiny. It started on Saturday, September 4th, with the first of four consecutive home games. This team had a resolve. This team was willing to pay the price for excellence. We had a very tough preseason practice, a very demanding one. We worked awfully hard and the kids responded very well. They came back in great physical condition. Uh, I told them the first day we were going to work very hard and I think we probably worked as hard or harder than any team we've had going back to the 68-69 teams. The team captains and the squad were eager to get to the pursuit of the goal. The fans were anxious to see what had been called a new look offense. In Penn State wins over Temple, Maryland and Rutgers, they liked what they saw. The offense produced 119 points in those three games. Some called it air paternal. Todd Blackledge completed 38 passes in 79 attempts for 678 yards and 12 touchdowns, four in each game. Blackledge hit 12 different receivers, including number 82, junior wide receiver Kenny Jackson. The crowd pleaser from South River, New Jersey. Greg Garrity, number 19. The senior from suburban Pittsburgh's North Allegheny High School. Number 11, Kevin Bauer, another member of the Fleet Corps of wide receivers. Number 81, senior Mike McCluskey, was the tight end target. And the new pass offense put the running backs in the action. The untested offensive line passed with flying colors as Pete Sparrows, Ron Heller, Bill Conts, Mark Battaglia, Dick McGinnis, and Dave Love did an outstanding job of pass protecting and clearing the way. Kurt Warner, the versatile All-American from Wyoming, West Virginia, grabbed three touchdown passes and showed the powerful running style that would become the foundation of Penn State's ground game. There was plenty of help from number 44, Junior Jonathan Williams, who adjusted well to the fullback position. From Joel Coles, the senior from Penn Hills, back in form after an injury. From senior Tom Barr and sophomore Skeeter Nichols and Tony Mumford. What about the kicking game? In the early games, freshman Massimo Manca capably handled the place kicking, and senior Ralph Giacomero more firmly established himself as one of the premier punters in college football. Whether the situation called for launching a rocket, kicking coffin corner style, Or punching a wedge shot. Brian McCann, Bill Emerson, Brad Starr, John Luton, and center Mike Stillman led the charge on kick coverage. The kick returns became the responsibility of Kevin Bauer, who quickly became one of the nation's leaders in that department.
Mark Robinson was an adequate helper. Mark Robinson, number 32, the big play man on defense. How good would that defense be? Defensive co-captain Walker Lee Ashley had positive feelings before the season started. Well, I think that we'll be very strong. Granted that we lost a lot of very good ball players. In fact, five out of the six defensive players that we had were drafted. But uh, there's a lot of young guys that are willing to step up and take that challenge. And it's up to uh, Ken Kelly and I and the rest of the defensive seniors to go out and help them in any possible way that we can. The defensive captains, led by example Ashley, number 37, and Ken Kelly, number 98, the others followed the example. Number 52, Joe Hines, Dave Ofer, number 67. Number 70, Greg Catuso. Number 99, Mike Garrett. And number 63, Todd Mose. David Paffenroth, number 33. Number 97, Scott Radisick. Harry Hamilton, number 17. That man again, Mark Robinson. Number 39, Dan Beyond. And number 49, Roger Jackson. Penn State is 3-0 with the undefeated Nebraska Cornhuskers coming to town. The night before the game, thousands of blue and white faithful attend a giant pep rally to salute their coach and their team. Finally, co-captain Ken Kelly tells them what they want to hear. We know as a team that we're going to beat Nebraska, but we need all the help we can get. It's not that we might beat Nebraska, we're going to beat Nebraska. The next day when Coach Paterno and Coach Osborne wished each other well, it's not likely either coach was aware of the drama that was about to unfold. The Nittany line offense gets it going early as Todd Blackledge connects with Kurt Warner for 43 yards. And on the next play, hits Kirk Bowman in the end zone, culminating a six-play, 83-yard drive. Seven-nothing Penn State. In the second quarter, an alert Al Harris, number 88, pounces on a loose ball. At midfield, following a black ledge to Garrity completion, it's Kurt Warner time. With a middle clogged, Warner bounces outside and races to the Nebraska four-yard line. then sweeps left for the Lions' second score, and Penn State's halftime lead is 14-7. On the Lions' first third quarter possession, an 83-yard scoring drive is highlighted by the running of Williams and Coles. And a rifle shot Blackledge to Jackson. The Lion lovers respond. But so does Nebraska to get back to within seven. A field goal narrows the Penn State march. Then Turner Gill passes and dives the Cornhuskers to a 24-21 lead. Setting up one of the most exciting and dramatic one minute and 18 seconds of football ever witnessed at Beaver Stadium. From the Penn State 35, 
screen pass to Skeeter Nichols for 16 yards. From the Nebraska 49, Kenny Jackson makes a diving sideline catch at the 33. 52 seconds remain. On fourth and 11, no tying field goal attempt, rather a clutch connection. Black ledge to Jackson, first down. The clock is moving. Blackledge back, looking, looking. Must scramble, must get out of bounds. 13 seconds remain. From the 17, a sideliner to Mike McCluskey stops the clock. And from the two, the winning shoe top catch by Kirk Bowman. Touchdown. Penn State 27, Nebraska 24, and the celebration is on. Great win, a thrilling win, an important win. But this was uh, was certainly one of the, the really great wins in Penn State history. It was on national television, it was very dramatic against a very quality football team. Uh, and w with a team that, that's fighting for some national recognition right now, and, and having played that well on, in the clutch is really very important, and I thought it was very impressive. The Lions took their 4-0 record to Birmingham, Alabama. After a blocked kick set up an early tied touchdown, a 69-yard pass play pulled Penn State even. But Alabama scored two more touchdowns in the second quarter. In the second half, the Nittany line defense stiffened. And a John Williams touchdown run moved the score to 24-14, Alabama. Penn State moved to within three points, going 75 yards in 10 plays. But destiny turned its head on the young Lions as they suffered their first loss. Time to reassert that early season resolve. Confidence, leadership, and togetherness. The leaders on the team really just uh, rallied around with everybody and, and, and we just decided that we couldn't lose any more games, that we were still in the thick of things, that we didn't feel that a team, any team in the country was going to go undefeated and win the national championship like Clemson did the year before and that we were still very much in the picture. So we decided uh, that we were not going to lose any more football games. We were going to take them one at a time and win each one of them one at a time and uh, you know it just the Syracuse game following was a tough game because we had to win it any way possible. And after that, uh, the ball kind of got rolling again and we started picking up more confidence. Back to more friendly surroundings. Homecoming weekend at Penn State. The first must-win game in the new winning streak is against the Orange of Syracuse. The game plan, more aggressive defense. Ashley, Biondi, and Hamilton respond. The offensive strategy? Establish the running game. The line takes charge. Mark Battalion, number 59. Pete Sparrows, number 56. Tight end, Mike McCluskey. Again, the defense does its job. It 
It's not a total no-pass day, but the run is the thing. Number 79, Bill Conts clears the way. As a unit, the offensive line dominates the line of scrimmage as Penn State rolls to a 21-7 third quarter lead. A Mike Zordich sack early in the fourth quarter sets up the final touchdown drive. Kurt Warner's final carry, a 34-yard touchdown run, gives him a two-touchdown, 148-yard afternoon. The defense added the big play to its repertoire. Interceptions by Catuso. Number 95, Rogers Alexander. And number 27, Chris Sedner. Final score, Penn State 28, Syracuse 7. The Lions now must get ready to play three of their next four games on the road. The first road leads to Morgantown, West Virginia. It's the 49th meeting in a series dominated by the Nittany Lions. On West Virginia's second possession, Walker Lee Ashley Harris's quarterback Jeff Hostet. Steve Seft recovers for Penn State. The big pass play puts Penn State in field goal range. And Nick Ganzatano's 31-yarder provides a 3-0 first quarter lead. Another big play by Sefter stops Hostetler on a fourth down effort. Early in the second period, a booming punt by Ralph Giacomero and good coverage by special team captain Stuart McMunn puts the Mountaineers deep in their own territory. The defensive play of Gattuso and Zordich keeps them there. The Lions then put together a 12-play, 64-yard drive, resulting in a 10-0 halftime lead. A key interception by Mark Robinson stops a third-quarter West Virginia threat. Scott Radisick is the fourth-quarter threat stopper. The 6'3", 240-pound linebacker from Brentwood, Pennsylvania, rambles 85 yards with an interception to put Penn State up 17 to nothing. On Penn State's final drive, it becomes apparent the offensive line has become capable of controlling the line of scrimmage for the running game. Clearing the way for Skeeter Nichols, and for Kenny Jackson on the flank of reverse. The result, a 28-0 win for the Nittany Lions. Coach Paterno had observed a greater defensive intensity and better pass-run balance from the offense. The next week at Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts against the Eagles of Boston College, both observations were confirmed. Number 97, Scott Radisson, continued his sensational defensive play. Walker Lee Ashley was back in his sack act. Strasburg's Dave Paffenroth had a key interception. What about the offensive bounce? Todd Blackledge and his pass receiving partners, Mike McCluskey, Greg Garrity, Kenny Jackson and company, accounted for 243 passing yards. And three touchdowns.
backup quarterback, Doug Strang's 66-yard contribution, put the total team passing yardage at 309. The perfect balance calls for matching that on the ground. Kurt Warner had a personal season high. Racing, straining, powering his way for 183 yards. In all, the Nittany line running backs averaged nearly six yards per carry on 57 rushing attempts. Total yardage on the ground, 309. The offense scored 52 points against Boston College and 54 points against North Carolina State the following week to set the stage for an all-important game at South Bend, Indiana. Penn State and Notre Dame. Everybody is ready for this one. The fans, the coach, the team. After the Fighting Irish had taken a 7-0 first quarter lead, the swarming Penn State defense takes charge, throwing Alan Pinkett for a 15-yard loss on fourth and one at the Penn State 26. The offense moves 59 yards in eight plays for the equalizer. On the next Notre Dame possession, Kelly and Sefter get the ball back for the offense. Gonzatano's 42-yard field goal puts Penn State ahead, but a Pinkett kickoff return gives the Irish a 14-13 halftime lead. Midway through the third quarter, a typical Mark Robinson sting fires up the Lion defense. And Mr. Sefter is at it again. Still trailing by one point in the fourth quarter, two plays net 76 yards. Behind superb protection, Blackledge fires to Jackson for 28, then to Warner for 48 and the go-ahead touchdown. The two-point conversion attempt fails, but on the following kickoff, the Irish receiver touches his knee on the one-yard line. Everybody is fired up. Result, safety. Penn State 21, Notre Dame 14. Then the offense takes control as Warner flies for 44 yards to the Irish 15. Nick Gonzatano adds the insurance field goal. That's a happy field goal kicker returning to a happy bench. It's a great come from behind win. It's a nine and one record with one big one to go. No Sugar Bowl thoughts this day. The concentration is on the Pitt Panthers. The fans and the national television audience know the Penn State seniors will wear the blue and white for the last time at Beaver Stadium. It's really hard to describe what a great group of seniors we had this year at Penn State. They did everything a football coach could ever ask of a group of guys. They were great leaders. They were close to each other. They helped with the younger players. In addition to that, obviously, they were superb football players and superb competitors. I don't think we've ever had a group of guys that, when they were behind or in tough trouble, were able to, to kind of suck it up and get the thing done despite the odds. They were just a phenomenal group of young people. We're going to really miss them, uh, and we'll never forget them. They just have given us four Great, great years of football, and in particular this last season, which is the highlight of their career. Captain Pete Sparrows had some reflections too. I was honored to be able to, you know, be a captain going into the season, and you know, each game was it was an honor to be out there for my teammates, especially the seniors. But the pit game, you know, is 
going into that last game at Beaver Stadium was going to be a, a very you know, emotional moment for all of us. And I can tell you that you know, I'm just glad to, to, to have been able to do that for our teammates. Time for Lions and Panthers to get at. Midway through the first period, Dave Pappenroth gets a hand on a Dan Marino pass, and Ken Kelly intercepts. From the Penn State 18, Warner sweeps right for nine. From the 35, Blackledge delivers a strike to Greg Garrity for a 28-yard game. John Williams gallops for 12. And the field goal puts the Lions on the scoreboard. At the end of the first quarter, it's Penn State 3, Pitt nothing. In the second quarter, Pitt moves the ball well, scores a touchdown, and takes a 7-3 halftime lead. In the second half, the Penn State defensive unit plays like a team possessed. Penn Hills native Dan Biondi stops Thomas for a three-yard loss. Following the punt, it's that black ledge Jackson get-together. It's Kenny's 41st reception of the season. His seventh touchdown pass. A Penn State wreck. Here comes that big blue defense. Kelly chasing Marino. Sacked by Ofer. The following line possession results in another field goal and a 13-7 lead for the Nittany Lions. Sensational defense again. Rocky Washington with the hit heard all the way to Beaver Falls. Then Sefton, Radisic, and Mark Pruitt. With a 16-10 lead, let's pick up the Lions' final drive as presented by the Penn State Football Radio Network. Has a hole on the right side. He's across the 35 and outside the 40-yard line before Wayne Lekowski brings him down. This is Williams now, swinging to the left. Gets to the corner, breaks the tackle at midfield. He's in pit territory at the 45, the 40, inside the 35 before he's forced out of bounds. Warner again, wiggling, jumping right, left, has the hole and picks up five, six, seven yards. Hand up to the up back. Jonathan Williams has a hole and gets the first down. Mike Stillman snaps, trying sets, Gonchitano's kick. It's gone! I'll repeat that. It's good. It's a happy, happy time. These Penn State players having shared so much together throughout the season, bask in the ecstasy of victory. It's celebration time again. Much has been said about the leadership and togetherness of this team. The total team character is perhaps most vividly exemplified by the post hard blackledge Kurt Warner French. Kurt Warner, all American, holder of 41 individual Penn State records. Todd Blackledge, Phi Beta Cat holder of 25 individual records. These two were among the top 10 finishers in the Heisman Trophy balloting. This team produced two more All-Americans, junior safety Mark Robinson 
and junior wide receiver Kenny Jackson. Significant individual achievements. Significant team achievements. A 10 and 1 record defeating six goal bound teams. The 44th consecutive non losing Penn State football season. A postseason Sugar Bowl bit. This team didn't pay the price of success. It enjoyed the price of success. Penn State Football 1982. It was a season of celebration, a year of destiny. really started six days before. It's December 26th at the Harrisburg International Airport. <laughs> For you guys, I'm counting you to bring back some of that uh, Georgia peaches and some peanuts. We got a bet going with us. Governor Richard Thornburg and thousands and thousands of Penn State followers are there to give their team and their coach a rousing send-up. Aboard the L-1011 Delta Charter, the players seem relaxed, some really relaxed. They're thinking about New Orleans, but mostly about the game for the national championship. I'm anxious to prove, you know, to everyone in the country we're number one. I think that, uh, you know, the schedule we play and, and, and the people we've gone against all year, we're the number one team, and, and we have one more step to attain that goal. That's what I'm looking forward to doing. Welcome to New Orleans, the home of the Sugar Bowl, po' boys, red beans and grits, shrimp and crawfish, Dixieland music. A couple of visiting musicians make themselves right at home. No time to waste, a practice is scheduled in less than two hours. A Louisiana State Police escort makes certain the seven-bus entourage keeps the tight schedule. Welcome to the Hilton, the New Orleans home of the Nittany Lions. Yes, a home thanks to the congeniality and hospitality of General Manager Joe Frederick, Penn State 56. It's like uh, having a, a hotel full of family. Uh, many old friends, my alma mater, as they say, it's like having a, a house full of uh, relatives. And since this is my home, every time an elevator door opens, there's a pleasant surprise there, and I can visit and converse with people. And it's just uh, like a week-long honeymoon for me. Uh, I don't think there's anyone on our defense. When the players right. opened the elevator door and left the hotel, uh, they were on their way to, like to meet the media. If it could happen. Uh, we have two or three guys that we use as Herschel Walker, and they've done a, uh, not at the same time, no. Uh, they've done a, a heck of a job getting us prepared. Uh, we've got some great freshman running backs. But uh, we've done nothing different. He's just another running back, no matter what anybody else says. And uh, we prepared for this game like any other game. And uh, nothing fancy, nothing new. We're just going to go out and, and be a Penn State defense and, uh, you know, swarm him. Joe said he wanted to work harder before he left State College. Uh, do you feel it? Yeah, yeah, we worked real hard before we left State College. And we worked hard yesterday, too. So just the, the impact of the game has been enough to motivate us and keep, keep us going. Uh, we just thought, thought the whole time we were here. Writers hung on every word. Cameras took pictures, pictures, pictures. The eye of the TV camera watched everything. 
it's a, it's an awfully good football team. They'd be fine even if Herschel was not on this football team. Uh, George, you might be here. Okay, now. Woo! Woo! Here we go. Butterfly, pull it in. Butterfly. Goodbye, media. Hello, practice field. Time to stretch it out. Time to start getting ready. Even time for a Joel Cole's message to mom. Yeah, mom, I'm all right. They're not working me too hard. I think I'm gonna make it. We just got a couple more days. I'll see you when you get here. But foremost in the mind of every Nittany Lion player was the game for the national championship. You know, we have given up a lot of yards this year, but you know, we're, we, we bend and not break like everyone's heard all this year. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll give up some yards in between the 20s, but we get tough once it gets in, inside the 20. And if we come out with uh, giving up three points instead of seven, we'll be happy with that. A game like this, it's so easy to get up for. Um, you know, there's, you don't even have to do anything, you know, something like this, because it is for a national championship and everything, and, and it's just going to come out, you know. I'm just so excited to play this game. You know, it's, it's, you know I, I'm sure the rest of the team feels the same way that I do, and, you know, we're just going to go out and we're going to be ready. We're going to be probably more psyched for this game than any other game that we played this year. Well, I've never g played against Herschel Walker, but like any other back, you know, he can go down. You know, he puts his pants on the same way I do me, my own. You know, but I think that he can be stopped and he will be stopped on January 1st. Over the year, over the preseason, we've come a long ways and we've and I play with a bunch of great guys. I play with a, a bunch of guys that have had to just scrap and, and fight and, uh, and, and claw for everything that we've, that we've received this year. Uh, we didn't really know how good we were going to be, uh, and uh, we really don't know how good we are right now. And I think we're going to find out you know, on January 1st. I think we're going to find out what we're made of. I think we're going to find out what type of people we are. Well, hopefully a lot, you know, when he goes back there to pass, because some days it can be long, defensive back dilemma running around in the field frantically trying to cover the receivers. But so hopefully we will get good pressure when he does pass and he'll throw the ball around and, hope, and so we can get in there and make a few interceptions and maybe that could be the key to the game. There was, of course, some time for eating, sightseeing, socializing. Mr. Jim Flower of the Sugar Bowl Committee explains. While the teams are here, we have to give them as much of New Orleans atmosphere as we can. And we see that they get an abundance of fresh seafood, which is available in the area. Meat if they want it. A little Dixieland, the historical view of the French Quarter and the Jackson Square, the Cathedral Museum, if they're inclined that way. With the free time, we hope they get an opportunity to see the city and participate in it. Hey, what you pick on the line instead of this donkey? Yeah. <laughs> what kind of what kind of dog is that? Huh? That's a pit bull. Yeah, a pit bull. <laughs> hey, get out of here! He's right here. He's down there. That's how it's gonna be in the game. This is a shrimp. <laughs> This is a lot of shrimp. <laughs> John Williams is an expert in the proper preparation procedure. Push all the skins off. Like that. And then you dip it in the sauce like this. And you give it to... Blacklist, like that. That's it. Uh, let me. And eat they did, extremely well, and everything in sight at Houlihan's, Fitzgerald's, and at the combined teen party in the Superdome. The floor show: Walker, Lee, Ashley, Strutt.
The floor show at the Hilton Grand Ballroom is a mini Mardi Gras. These are Penn State football players. Would you believe uniforms with pizzazz? Kenny Jackson and Mark Robinson, All-American Movement. A sugar bowl tradition, the burning of the sugar. Cafe Brulee, prepared by chefs Joseph Vincent Paterno and Vincent Joseph Dooley. Back to reality, preparation, concentration, conversation. It's got serious time with the Lions on the field of combat, the playing surface of the Superdome, the calm before the storm. Go to work! Nice, good job. Yeah, let's go. Set, hut! Move, 40! Move, 40! Half, set! Finally, it's January 1, 1983, the morning of the game in the hotel lobby. The game's getting closer. The song, Sweet Penn State Blue. Tell you right, Penn State number one. Upstairs, things were much quieter. Players and parents in their rooms. The Spiros family. It's very exciting. It's, I think I get more excited than he does, really, before the games. And it's just something that you always think about or dream about to this stage. And it just makes you very, very proud. The Garretys. Probably one of the greatest experiences that Greg will have and, and will remember all his life will be those that he associated with while here at Penn State. So uh, the college, the facilities, coaching staff, and the players, I think, are the tops in the country. The Beyondies. I'm really a little nervous about the game, but because you want to see the boys win it. I want to see them win for myself, too. <laughs> <laughs> because we've been a big fan. These past four years have been just uh, great excitement and a lot of fun. I just hate to see it end. Maybe it won't. Walker Lee Ashley and his father. It's like a dream come true to me because I had the opportunity to go to Penn State back in 1960. I took some courses there. And when he chose to come to Penn State, it was like a dream come true because I fell in love with the campus the moment I went there and the people surrounding me and that. And I was very happy he chose Penn State. It's getting noisier downstairs. It's a foggy day in New Orleans town. From the outside, the dome looks ominous. But inside... The Penn State locker room awaits the gladiators. No, these are not gladiators, they're people. coming together once again with a common goal, with a common dream. It's just been a great thrill and a great pleasure to play on this team. And uh, I just have a real good feeling about this game Saturday uh, because this team has worked for it. And they've pulled together and people have sacrificed and individuals have sacrificed for the better of the team. And uh, that's what football is all about. But I think consistency is the biggest thing. We're going to have to play well and, and play up to our capacity. We can't afford to... Uh, make a lot of mental mistakes uh, early in the game or even late in the game for that matter and, and still hope to, to win. We're going to have to really put our best foot forward and, and hope that it's good enough. Penn State is such a great tradition and it's going to carry on for years and years and to be able to say in years to come, you know, I was associated with that national championship team would be something to dream about and, you know, this is it. It's at our hands right now. The largest Sugar Bowl crowd in the history of the Louisiana Superdome greeted the Penn State Nittany Lions. And it's apparent the team is ready to play. 
And it didn't take long for the Lions to get the blue and white followers on their feet. This is the second play of the game. Todd Blackledge, play action fake, back to pass. Good protection. Over the middle to Kurt Warner. Seven yard gain and Penn State's first first down of the game. This is two plays later. Blackledge once again, back to pass. Again, down the middle, long this time. A diving, leaping catch by Mike McCloskey, and it's a 33-yard game. Next play. Blackledge steps up, delivers a strike across the middle to Greg Garrity. It's a first down at the Georgia nine-yard line. Blackledge, looking right, spots his big tight end. McCloskey makes the catch out of bounds at the two. Power set. Give to Warner. Blocked by Joel Coles. Sees the corner and is on in for the touchdown. And Penn State leads 7 to nothing. 80-yard drive. Blackledge is 4 for 4 for 76 yards. Georgia's possession now. And they move the ball. Play action fake. Back to pass. Lastinger. Completes to Clarence K. First down, Georgia in Penn State territory. Two plays later, a pitch to Herschel Walker. Gets a bit of the corner. Finally forced out of bounds by Paffenroth after a 12-yard gain. That's to be his longest of the game. After the dogs move to two more first downs. Lasting. Great defensive play as they string it out. And Radisic makes the stop. Field goal, and it's Penn State 7 and Georgia 3. Georgia in possession once again, looking at the line of scrimmage. Walker Lee Ashley converges on Herschel Walker and stops him at the line of scrimmage. On the first play of the second quarter, once again, that Penn State defense strings it out, and Harry Hamilton stops Walker for a two-yard loss. After the Georgia punt, the Nittany Lions now in possession. First down, pass. Blackley setting up, throwing. A leaping catch by Kenny Jackson for a 23-yard gain. That's worth another look. Now on the handoff to Kurt Warner, showing the ability of this running back to find running room. Cuts back to the inside, back to the outside, back to the inside. 26 yards on the run for Kurt Warner. Nick Gonsitano, 38-yard field goal, and Penn State's lead is 10-3. Penn State defense held again on the next Georgia series. Forcing the punt and setting up a spectacular punt return by Kevin Bob. The Penn State field goal attempt went wide, and Georgia has the ball. After gaining one first down, it's third and seven, and Mark Robinson makes a spectacular defensive play. Number 32, Mark Robinson. Punt formation once again. Kevin Bow ready again. Bow. Starts to the outside, then goes to the middle return. A 24-yard punt return to the 35-yard line. It's Blackledge to pass again. Greg Garrity down the right sideline makes the 36-yard gain. And Penn State is on the move. From the double wing, Jonathan Williams gets a good hold, knocks over a tackler, and powers his way for 11 yards to the Georgia 18-yard line. Then from the nine, 
A magnificent cutback by Kurt Warner for the touchdown. Let's look at it from the offensive backfield. Warner starts to the outside, gets the flow going that way, plants the right foot, cuts back into the open spaces, and on into the end zone. Penn State 17, Georgia 3. Georgia now in possession after the kickoff on its own eight-yard line. Greg Gattuso stops Chris McCarthy for a yard loss in the backfield. On second down, watch Walker Lee Ashley, number 37. Play the block, off the block, pop Herschel Walker. Once again, Georgia must punt. Once again, Kevin Bow makes the grab and returns for 10 to the Georgia 44. Blackledge to pass. Complete to Mike McCloskey for 13 yards. Then Nick Gansitano kicks a 45-yard field goal, his longest, the longest field goal in Penn State Bowl history. Lions lead 20-3 with 44 seconds to play in the first half. But Georgia isn't finished after moving to two quick first downs. Lasting completes to Kevin Harris. He laterals to Herschel Walker. And it's first down at the Penn State 10-yard line. On the next play, Lastinger lofts a pass to Herman Archie. Georgia touchdown. Penn State leading at halftime 20 to 10. The dogs get it going in the second half. On third and 15, Lastinger passes 24 yards to Harris. And the dogs are on the move. The Bulldogs got two more first down, and then Herschel Walker scores the touchdown to narrow the gap. Penn State 20, Georgia 17. The Georgia defense held, and the dogs have it back, but this time, the Penn State defense stops Walker. Loss of two, Greg Gattuso. On second down, Lastinger in his own end zone. Let's one fly, and Mark Robinson makes the interception. Watch the move. Spins to the outside, back to the inside, and returns the intercepted pass 18 yards. On Georgia's next possession, it's third down. Lastinger forced to pass again. Scrambling out of the pocket, being chased by Walker Lee Ashley, hangs it up. Mark Robinson again on the interception. Penn State now, first down. Kurt Warner, off tackle, eight yard gain. Kurt Warner again, 11 yard gain. We're into the fourth quarter now, second and five. Warner pitched to the outside for seven yards, and Penn State has its ground game going. Then with the dogs ground conscious, perhaps, the play of the game. Blackledge going for the bomb, complete to Garrity for a touchdown. Penn State leads 27-17, and we must watch that play again. We're picking up the Georgia possession now third and five at its 25 and Walker Lee Ashley sacks Lastinger for an 11 yard loss punt formation time Kevin Bow once again this time the sure handed Bow finds the ball pop loose and the Bulldogs have new life recovering in Penn State territory on first down Lastinger to Harris for 16 yards 
Georgia then moved to the Penn State nine and on third and seven, Lassinger under the blitz from Ken Kelly puts up a high archer that's caught for the touchdown. On the two point conversion attempt, Walker has no more success than he's had all night long. Now Penn State must keep the ball, and that they do, as Blackledge sneaks for an all-important first down. And then a few moments later, on a key third and three, pass completion to Garrity, a first down, and the Penn State Nittany Lions smell the victory and smell a national championship. Just six seconds remaining to play in the game. Ralph Giacomero back to punt. Punts it away. The clock is ticking out. It's apparent to everyone that the ball game belongs to Penn State. Sweet savor of victory. A blue and white night at the Hilton. <laughs> Bourbon Street, New Orleans, Louisiana becomes College Avenue, State College, Pennsylvania. <laughs> but before State College, it's Harrisburg and all the Penn State towns in between. A truly moving experience for everyone. Well, I, it's just sinking in. The, the ride back from Harrisburg to State College, the, the night we came home with, uh, with this 90-mile parade, literally, with the, with the highways lined with kids and older women and people in fire engines in every little town welcoming us. And, Say number one, with thousands and thousands of people just beside themselves with joy and excitement and happiness and pride. I keep coming back to the word pride in, in Penn State and Penn State football and in the state of Pennsylvania. It, I, I knew we wanted to be number one, but I never realized just how frustrated our, our people, our fans and everybody else were and that, that they wanted to be able to just stand up and say, without a doubt, we are number one. And I think it's great for all of us. A number one coach, a number one team, a number one university. We are Penn State. We are number one.